sometimes when there's like a lot of distraction.
timer. Having a hard time putting it off to the side. 
Because so, cause you feel like you want to... It, it, it could work somewhere else, but it just does, I just realized it doesn't work here. And I'm kind of stuck because uh, I put a lot of energy into it. So right. now I have, it's like I have to reboot. Right, 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 so, right, right, right. right. So I'm thinking about it again. Right. You know, to get the whole thing running again. You know? Right, it's right, right. It's just that one part. Right. Know, but, uh, and I'm trying to keep it and trying to work around it. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I'm trying to fix this part and make that part work with that, but it's, it's just not working. Right, but right, it's just, right. It's just hard. It's, it's very hard. So what is so? Yeah. It's like you're in the, like a thicket. I mean, people. When you we're talking, people are laughing. I think because we've all been there. So you know, you've written something really amazing. Yeah. It doesn't quite fit in the thing that you're working on, and now it's almost like more painful than. Pleasurable, you know, you're like shit, man, right? So now, what do you, what do you do? What do you do? And it's kind of, it, you're feeling kind of, it's gnarly, or you're feeling like it's, you're in like a tangle. That's what I feel. I'm doing this because that's what I feel like. I'm like, Ugh, like that, right? And it's kind of physically uncomfortable. And what do you, what do you do? What do you, what helps? Well, what I have been doing, I've been trying to make it work. Okay. But it's not working. So okay. what? I'm going to do right. is just take it out and just take it out. Right. And where, where are you going to put it, actually? Well, I'm, I could hold it for something else. You could. Yeah. You could. But I know it doesn't work with what I have. Right. So I was just saying it's just hard, you know, taking it out. Right. Right, 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 right. So, so I'm trying to think of an analogy because a lot of times, you know, it's like, it's like, well, I don't see a person. Have you ever been in a relationship that doesn't work? Yeah, maybe. We've been, like, I, I don't care, we've been married for 15, 90 years or something. You're amazing. But the rest of us, <laughs> we, you know, you, you get in a relationship and it doesn't work. It, you know, it's, it's good and it's lovely, but it doesn't work out. And you think, darn, I put all that energy into this relationship, right? It didn't turn out the way I wanted. And now what do I do? And you feel like it got you maybe ready. You can think, like, this, these pages that you wrote maybe got you to a level where you could see the next thing you're supposed to write. Do you see what I mean? So it's not wasted. So it's about, when I'm asking you where you're going to put it, I think you might get a nice folder. Not expensive, but just a nice color that you like, you know? And like if you like red, you look good in green, you get a green folder, you know what I mean? And write in nice letters the title of what this thing is, right? And put it off to the side on your desk or even like staple it, put it on a wall or something. And so this is going to be for that. And put it in a place of honor because it's a great thing that you wrote. Just doesn't fit in what you're working on. You know what I mean? So, so I think the way you feel about this piece that you've written is very, very important. And if you see it as, you know what? You had to write that to be ready to write the next thing that's going to fit. You say, oh, because we, we, we got to think of it that way. You know what I mean? And it's just like training. Like, you know, you got to, I don't know, it, you got to run that race to be able to run the next one. You know what I mean? You got to do the prep work to be able to do that. And that's, that's, that's all that it is. So it's not all in vain, you know? It's just that kind of, the, the thing that you had to write in order to see, to get to the top of the mountain to see it's like Moses or something. I'm just trying to think. I'm, I'm, I don't want to be wrong on Moses. But didn't Moses, like, he went to a certain level and then he had to, he didn't make it all the way. And then, anyway, I, can't, I don't want to get it wrong. But, you know what I mean? He went to like, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Right? But what's really great is that a couple of weeks ago, if I remember correctly, you were like, do I wait until I have inspiration? Or to, you know, right? And I was like, just go for it. And right, lean into it. And you lean into it, and that's what you get, right? You want something great. That's like, good for you. I'm patting myself. I'm patting you on the back by patting. <laughs> you know, you, you really deserve some praise. And I'm very proud of you. So that's a really great thing that you did. So just put it in a place of honor, you know? And say, yeah. Because that's what, right? That's what creative people do. We like, you know, take a step. You know? And now, like, now you could look around and say, okay, okay, uh, you can call the piece by its name, okay, work that I'm working on. As you can see, I'm 
I'm ready to work. Okay. It's hard. I hear you. I hear you. You look handsome. You look very handsome today. You got your good tie on. You're happy. <laughs> so there you go. That's, that's, that's important though too, you know? Right? Anybody else? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming back. It's good to see you. How are you doing, Chris Barlow? You doing okay? Just say hi. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, so I do a lot of uh, brain drain. Right. So just free writing. Free writing, right. Um, I've been told at one point, like, you don't want to go back and read over your writing, like, if it's just, okay. if, if it's just brain drain. Okay. But at what point do you maybe go back over it and say, I want to develop this or uh, without judgment, I guess, or, I mean, what's that fine line to go back over something that sure. you maybe don't expect to go back over because you say, oh, it's just free flow. Right, 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 um, right. That's a really good question. What's your name? Kismet. Kismet? Yes. Thank you. K I S. M E T. Yes. Oh, that's a great name. Oh, that's Thank such a pretty name. Thank you. <laughs> that's okay. my real name, too. Well, even if it was. Well, this is the Judy Garland call. Judy Garland is Judy Garland, and she is not Francis Gum, who does not exist. She's Judy Garland. So, whoever you say you are, we take you. Uh, awesome. Okay? Um, so, so Kismet, she says, so she does free writing, like we all do, right? And a lot of people say if you, you free write, then you don't go, you don't look back. You know, you just go forward, and you never look back, or, or you'll turn to a pillar of salt or something. I mean, but um, if you're writing in order to find something, right? So it's a tricky thing because you have to free write as if you're not going to look back at it, so you can be truly free, right? And then, at some point, because you want to look at what you've been mining, you have to look back. So I would say set yourself a time or a space. So I would say if you have like a notebook, I'm going to fill this notebook with free writing, and then when I'm done, I'm going to look back. Like that. Or I'm going to free write for two weeks, and then I'm going to look back. Like that. So you, when you, and when you want to free write for two weeks, you want to do it every day for a certain amount of time. You know, okay, so have it be a practice, and then say, after two weeks, I will look back. Or after I finish this notebook, I will look back on it. Okay? So it's part of your plan, so that your subconscious knows two things. One, it knows, I'm going to just free write. Whoa, baby, just go, 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 go. And way, way back, your organizational mind is going, in two weeks, we're going to look at this. But not yet. In two weeks, we're going to look at this. So your mind can help. You yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, but it's not that that we need to we need to be writing well right now. That that person, that voice is not in the front of your mind. She's in the way back of your mind, right? Okay. Yes. So, yeah. And when you go through, you can take a, a different colored pen, or I don't know if you're actually writing or typing or whatever. You can start circling stuff. Or if you write free write on a computer, right? You can print it out and then just circle passages that are of interest. It seem to adhere to a to a common theme, you know. You know, and that's also a good thing. And we can free write at any time. You can free write when you're in the beginning of a project, or like Philip, maybe you can free write. You know, just like set a timer and just. Shit, I'm gonna just write. I'm just. I don't know if you write by with a on a computer or by hand. I'm just gonna write for 20 minutes. Just free write. Just whatever comes out of my head on this topic. I'm going to see if there's anything there, like that. So you can do it in the middle of a project, too. So. Okay? What's the question? Thank you. Anybody Right. And what's happening by right. the time it's over. Right. And I get really big block 
on then uh, going back and transferring the logic of the end right. to the beginning parts, uh -huh. um, and like sort of taking the strongest part and then making the rest of the play cohere to that. Right. Um, I always get stuck on that process. Yeah. Um, wow. What is it? Is it has, did everybody hear Philip? He so he writes. He writes. He says he writes literally. So he writes, he starts at the beginning, he doesn't jump around in the scenes. So Amy's writing a play right now. So he starts at the beginning, he writes through, and what he discovers is by the time he gets to the end of his play, congratulations, it's a lot better than when he started because he's figured out the logic of the play, the story, the logic, the it of it, right? Okay, but, and which is great, and then you go, you gotta go back and sort of apply the logic to the rest of the play, and that's when you feel a block. What actually does it, so he feels a block. What actually does it feel like? I'm curious. What actually, can you like? Uh, it just overwhelms me, like I don't know what to do. Like, oh, you're in the water, like that? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, oh, uh. and, and then I always end up, I feel like I end up with this feeling of like, oh, by the end of the play, people will like the play, so. <laughs> right, 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 so I don't have to rewrite. Right, but I know that I do. But I know that or I do. Should. But, so it, it, does it feel like you're like drowning? Does it feel like somebody, like, have you ever seen a dog where somebody's walking a dog on the street and the dog is going... <laughs> does it feel like that feel like somebody's pulling you and you don't want to go? Does it feel like, what is that? Uh, feel? like scaling a mountain, maybe. Like scaling, like, so you're like climbing. Like a, a sheer cliff face. Like, like rock climbing. And it's like, oh, like, I don't know how to get my pick in for the first, like, step up. Great, that's, oh, your pick. So it's not like you're right. It's not like you're doing it freehand. Well, I've never done this before. I know, but I, I've seen pictures on the Patagonia website. They're all like, ah! I'm like, yeah, that's me in my other life. But so they have they have things, right? So you're like, I don't know where to so to stick my thing. And you could fall because it's a long way down. Right, so there's a little bit of, like, panic. I might ruin the whole thing. You might ruin the whole thing. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Okay. So maybe what's good are a couple of affirmations. One, I got this. Right? If you've written all the way to the end, and you say by the time we get to the end that the logic of the play has revealed itself to you, then you can say with all certainty, I got this. Okay? So you can say, I got this. And if all you have to do, I got this. My play is about, you could say, just take, so take yourself out of the, the swirl of the play, because that is a, a liquid, it's like undertow, or the, you know, it's, it's all very, your heart, right? So take yourself out of that, and just look at it as if somebody else wrote it. I got this. My play, this is the story of my play. You've revealed yourself, it's revealed itself to you by the end. My story is about whatever. This character and this character, blah, 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 and this happens and this happens and then the end, this happens. So I know that. So you can take a step out of it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you're not in the water trying to swim. You're outside of the water looking at the body of water. Okay? That's the rewriting process. You take yourself out of it and look at it objectively as if someone else wrote it. And then you give that someone else some notes. Okay. Also for us. This is what we're going to do, right? So it, you, you just extract, your, just take a step back, look at it. But your main mantra is, I got this, okay? And if all you do is do a little synopsis of your last scene to remind yourself of the story, if you feel like you're lost, repeat the story. This is the story about this. And I got this. I, got, I know I got this. And if you feel overwhelmed, take a step back from it. If you're typing and writing and you feel overwhelmed, go for a walk and just repeat yourself, I got this. I, I got this. I know the story. You see what I'm saying? So you don't have that feeling like I can't breathe and I want to quit and I don't want to do this because it's going to put me in, da in physical danger. Right? Because that's what it feels like when you're when sometimes on the block. It feels like you're in physical danger. Right? Is that help? Is that helpful? Yeah. And, and maybe they make a chart, scene by scene. Today I'll do the first page, or today I'll just write out the synopsis of my play. And then I'll walk around with it in my head. I got this. I got this. It's a play about this and this and this and this and this. I got this. I mean, it, it, 
it might be helpful. You should give it a try. Anybody else?
Uh-oh, we've lost it. We found it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, this person says, uh, this year I crafted a 365-line poem. She learned of your 365 days, 365 days uh, about a third through the year. She wants to dramatize it, and she wants to know what you would suggest for the next steps. And what does she do with the four days she missed a line? Oh, what does she do with the four days she missed a line? Yay, for you! So someone wrote a 365-line play, poem. poem, sorry, poem, and she wants to dramatize it. Yay! Because she's out there somewhere. Yes. And she, Alyssa. Alyssa, and you want to dramatize it. Congratulations, first of all, for writing the long, long poem. Um, you want to dramatize it. So I would say start reading it aloud if you haven't started already, right? So you want to dramatize something, you want to hear what it sounds like in, in the live space. So you can start reading it out loud. Maybe identify some characters if there are characters. Maybe it's a solo show, you never know. But you're gonna get a feel of it by reading it out loud and maybe even going to uh, open mics. <laughs> open mics, like fun, like, like, not like slam stuff, but you could go where you could read your work and start reading it out loud and seeing if if drama appears or, or originates. I don't know what it is that you've written about, but you can see if something kind of bubbles up from that. But definitely start reading it out loud. And what do you do with the four days you missed? Eh, who cares? I mean, it's not like a test or anything. I mean, you can say, I missed a day. That's dramatic in itself. You can go, shit, these are the four days that I missed. What was happening on those four days? I can't even fucking remember. But even the language for hey, it was rough. It must have been, you must have been busy. So there you go. I was really busy today. That's okay. I mean, it's not like a thing. You know, you don't like have to, you know. It's great that you did what you did. So that's awesome. But definitely start reading it out loud. Go to some poetry jams, slams. You know, identify characters. If you have some friends who are actors, get someone to read it with you. That could be fun. Sounds like fun. Come to watch me work if you can, if you live nearby. Cool. Congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. Yeah. Do a dance. Not like that, but you know, your own name. Anybody else? I'd like to see Jesus Huff the H. Oh, yeah. Which was which was wonderful, right? And it made me come. But when I got home, my oh my god, my play in comparison is so not dramatic. Oh, uh, uh, right. When you compare your work to somebody, to somebody else, else's, else's that's brilliant, right, right. And then you want, and then you try to get back in your own right play. Sometimes right. there's a little resistance. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, Carol says it's it's hard sometimes when you go to see somebody else's work. And you go, shit, you know, you come get home, you get back to your own work, and you go, gee, my work isn't as good as this, or it's not here as good as this yet, or, or darn, darn, shit, well, damn, what do I do? Uh, it's hard, I mean, and no matter what you do, you just say you can walk outside thinking, I'm trying, I'm looking good today, and you see something, mm. <laughs> you know, so there's a little bit of this sort of like open to the world, and you have blinders on and you have your mantra that you say, like, I'm doing my work. You know what I mean? Otherwise, no, we, we'd never get anything done. I know that probably, I don't know, think of, like, if we looked at shit from, oh, gee, you're not that good. You know? Or I'm not as good as so and so. You know? It's tricky. It's very tricky because you want to support other people's work. You want to have their work inspire you. But at the same time, you want it to encourage you and motivate you and not discourage you and, and make you feel like, what's the use? And I had a friend once who said she was writing something, she said, what's the use? I'm not Tolstoy. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> wow, that's heavy. You know what I mean? I'm not Tolstoy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whoa, that's a big, you know? Um, so you just have to... I guess it, I mean, it's uh, how dramatic does it play have to be quiet play? Or, well, sure, or, there. How dramatic does a play have to be? Yeah, well, it, 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 well, no, no. I mean, there, there are plenty of, there are plenty of, there's all, you know, you know theater well enough to know there are so many different styles of plays. The, the 
lots of places like, yeah, everything isn't Medea, you know what I'm saying? Although I used to believe that everything, every place should be Medea. I used to be there once and thinking, oh, it has to be like this. But actually, no, it can be very beautiful. I mean, I, I, I'm a fan of, um, what's up, Richard Nelson. Does anybody know Richard Nelson's work? And it's very like, you know, it's very kind of low key and intense, but on a very different level, a very different intense. It's a very different kind of intensity. So, all drama doesn't have to be, you know, Agatha's on or something, right? Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a range. So not to worry about that. You just have to do your thing. Sometimes it's hard. How are you doing, Chris Barlow? How's your writing going? Okay. How, how was the year? What? <laughs> yeah. Like, did you get some writing done that you wanted to get? Good. I'm just checking it. You know, let's see. It wasn't? No. It's hard to, like, focus on anything good in a, in a bad time, you know? It's hard to focus on anything good in a bad time. Right. Yeah. So how do you do it? Not well sometimes. <laughs> right. Right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but, but knowing that that's what's going to pull you through, you know? Yeah. And knowing that there are places where you can go, like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta shit, the world is happening. And sometimes it sucks. Yeah. And I have to continue, you know? It's very difficult. It's a very difficult time, but I think there's, What's good about them is that they really test our metal, you know, our, our resolve to be the kind of person that we know we need to be. To make this shit wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. I'll take I'll take like <laughs> acceptable. Okay. There's all there's also and, and, and it can get in your day too, you know what I mean? It can get into your day. We go back to the line and go, shit, how the fuck does it work? You know? Thank you. 
Um, okay. But anyway, so yeah, but it's just you got to continue to do your work, right? You got to continue to do your work. Because it matters. I was thinking that I, I wrote, what I did at the, uh, earlier this year, I never talk about my work, but this is the last Watchmen work of the year. So what I did earlier this year is um, there was the inauguration. I thought, oh, what the fuck? You know, you know, I'm going to slap somebody. No, I don't think I'll slap somebody. I think I'll write a play a day. This is my obsessive thing. My obsessive thing goes over that. Three years, right now. I'll write a play a day for the first hundred days. Because I didn't know what else to do. So I wrote, I woke up every day and I wrote a play. And it was really hard. And at the end, what's really cool, the hundredth day was uh, the 30th of April. And then, fortunately, uh, there was uh, the hundred and second day, I think it was, or the hundredth day was maybe the twenty ninth April. Anyway, the hundredth, hundred and second day was the first of May. So I got to write a play called May Day, which was really cool, and that was the last play I wrote in the cycle. And it, I realized that stars, what we do now, could light the way for other people in the future. Right? The stars are what lights up the darkness. Right? So what we do now, what you do now, Chris Burrow, because I know you, I've known this for a long time, um, can light like the way for people, you know, in the future. Or not, but... Anybody have a question? Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> um, how do you, or what advice do you have for getting past the block of sharing your work? Because I, I complete things and I do it for my own enjoyment, or I'll do it because I just want to do it, Great. and then I never share it. Wow. Yeah. Great. That's a great question, Kismet. So Kismet says, what do you do if you want to get beyond the block of sharing your work? So Kismet writes a lot, she finishes her work. Good, good on you. And then you don't you you're slow to share it. Start small. So share it with a few people. Maybe share it with one person. Choose that these people mindfully. Okay? You want people who love you and who love you more than they want to see their notes in your work. <laughs> Yeah, right? So they want to see you succeed. They don't want to see you adopt their ideas. You see what I'm saying? So they'll go, yay, go, girl, go. You want cheerleaders. Like you're running the marathon. You want cheerleaders. You don't want people, you know, run this way. No, you want people cheering on. Okay? Start small. Start with a couple of people. If it's a play, you can get a couple of friends around. Or get one friend. Right? To read it with you, maybe. Or you can sit in your apartment and read it to one person. Maybe one scene. You see what I'm saying? So you can branch out that one. Take small steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. Right? That's how we all learn. I mean, I don't know. I, took, I, I don't know. But I think I, we all started walking with baby steps. Right? And talking in gobbledygook. So. Anybody see that? Like five seconds? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. So when is the next watch the month, Audrey? I believe January 29th. January 29th. It seems like a long way away. But they're going to have, uh, Under the Radar is going to be in the building uh, until then. So we're going to have fab the fabulous Under the Radar festival here. And uh, we'll be back on January 29th. But check the website. Yes, check the website. Check. And we'll send out the email. And if you want and to add your name to the email list, just come see me. Great. If you want to add your name to the email list, add your name to the email list. This is great. It's been yeah, it's been a difficult year, but we are we're we're making it. We're making it. <laughs> thanks. But thanks for coming. Amy behind the camera. Up here. Yeah, you guys are great.